Welcome back to Gear Check Games. This is part 8 of our Let's Play of Pokemon Red. I am Trey. Who am I joined by? Um, Me. This is Joe. I'm uh, using my NPR voice um, for your listening pleasure. Um, <laughs> is that not where we're going for? Oh. Yes. This is Pokemon Chill version. Ah, okay. This is the Pokemon G game your grandparents GC can watch. GCG and chill. <laughs> Set phasers to stoned. <laughs> Set phasers so what are we doing phone. today, Trey? Is it what uh, I think we're doing? Yes and no. Oh. Um, there are a few members that we need to add to the party. Oh boy. To take uh, on Lieutenant Sage. Yes, take on Lieutenant Sage. So the we'll lightning see. American. I'm, I'm trying wow. to call my shot here, because I'm also going to do a couple trades. One you already, like, have all been spoiled on, but oh, he's going to yes. be one of the MVPs of our team. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw you go through the menu, and I saw you, <laughs> I saw you, the cursor go over cry, and I, my mind didn't piece together what the menu was <laughs> at first, so I was like, wait, there's an option to cry. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> So, sometimes you just need a button to, to, to make you cry. <laughs> that's Stress the new. Reliever. Uh, that's the new app mm -hmm. from uh, Game Freak. Is Pokemon Cry? Mm -hmm. yeah. Along with Pokemon Sleep and Pokemon. Uh... Pokemon oh. Lie Down. Pokemon Try Not to Cry. Pokemon Cry <laughs> a lot. That's the mm -hmm. third yeah. one. Here's a drowsy. <laughs> I don't know why I'm fighting him. Because he's there. <laughs> yes. And there's some. There's a couple like um, fights over here that I don't think I catch all the guys. Uh, but I I fight him just to like showcase them for some reason. Mm -hmm. Huh. Dr drowsy especially is a little of annoying of a fight for me. <laughs> As you can see. Drowsy looks like a Jim Henson creature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he kind of reminds me of, like, the... I just watched The Dark Crystal for the first time a couple days ago. He kind of reminds me of the Mystics. <laughs> like, with oh, the big yeah. noses. Uh, that reminds me. I looks like Alf. <laughs> or Alf, <laughs> sure. Was that a Jim Henson production? Uh, I think I so. I don't know. Or affiliated in any way? I mean, I know he basically he basically owns like the American puppetry production industry, or mm -hmm. he did at the time. But like, uh, yeah, he, just he, couldn't, he, couldn't, he, uh, he had he had nothing on Lazy Town though. Yeah, those prosthetic chins. The, the, cla the classic puppet puppet show <laughs> from like the <laughs> Netherlands or something. Mm-hmm. He he got lost while leaving Melmac, took missed Earth and hit Kanto. Yeah. Or, what is the what is the Pokemon world's name? Is it is it the Earth? Is it just Earth or? I think it's just the world. Well, if the openings of the movies are anything, it's a giant Pokeball that transforms into an Earth-like planet when you zoom in. <laughs> oh my <up>. god. <laughs> It's like in Transformers, where uh, their entire planet is a Transformer and also their god at the same time. Oh, yeah. Transformers lore is weird. If you all have a moment to go on the Transformers wiki, just anything after Beast Wars is a trip. Just don't treat yourself. Hell, I mean... Who even needs Beast Wars? The fact that Orson Welles is part of the Transformers universe is <laughs> ugh, just just mind blowing by itself. I'm a toy that fights other toys. So speaking of the Pokemon oh, world, the French. <laughs> I've been <laughs> speaking of the Pokemon world. I've been looking for a way to like transition into this topic for like since we started the series, <laughs> but. Trey brought this up a long, like, before we even started recording this, and I thought it was really neat. But he talked about, like, uh, the idea of having, like, Pokemon games where you, like, you choose which town you start in, and the town you start in, dep d depending on the town you start in, you get, like, different starter Pokemon to choose from. Yeah. Or you, like, 
uh, I don't remember if this was part of your thing, if it was just me expanding on the idea, but the idea that you, like, you aren't given a starter Pokemon, but you have to find your own. And then yeah. that led me to, like, this idea that there's, like, a... There's, like, a coming-of-age ceremony ceremony type deal, kind of like in the beginning of Wind Waker or whatever, mm -hmm. where, like, once you reach a certain age, you're, like, you go, you, you do, like, this kind of coming-of-age thing where you go get your first Pokemon and then start your life as a trainer. Not another epic and, like, rap battle. And, like, the different towns will have different, like, ceremonies or, like, trials or whatever. Like, if you if you live in Lavender Town, you gotta do, like, a test of courage in the Pokemon Tower and catch your first ghost Pokemon or something. You <laughs> send a ten-year-old kid in there by himself. Well, good luck, Billy. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's one of the things I liked about Sun and Moon, is that, like, to welcome you to the village and to the Alola region, they're like, hey, here, have a starter Pokemon. He'll be your partner. Like, he will help you with your life and your journey in Alola. Like yeah. part of the tribe. Yeah, I feel like oh, if they oh, ever made uh, like a, oh, you continue with that. Well, I was just I was gonna, gonna say I, I, I've, I've been dipping back into Sun and Moon a little bit recently, and one thing that game does get very, very right is just like the feeling of the world. Like Alola is just an extremely pleasant place to be. Yeah, like just the world alone almost tempted me to like buy. Like, mm -hmm. Check it out. <laughs> I mean, I if, I didn't own a 3DS, so like that was the, my main thing stopping me. But like, if I did own a 3DS, I might have bought that, despite not having ever bought a Pokemon game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Bye, Drowsy. <laughs> Bye, Drowsy. <laughs> well, he tried. <laughs> I think that's the only battle he gets to showcase it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> There's a few Pokemon like that in this journey. It's like I'll pick them up, I'll try them out once or twice, and I'm just like you know, it's just <laughs> not working. <laughs> Yeah, I I know everyone's like, <laughs> everyone and their mother has given their ideas for like a Pokemon MMO, with oh, <laughs> massively boy. multiplayer Pokemon online game. How hard could it be to make? <laughs> but I think if they did ever make hire that, me, game freak. <laughs> yeah, if they did ever make something like that, I think it'd be really cool if you like chose a starting town for your trainer, mm -hmm. and then that would kind of determine where you kind of started out with, like, uh, what your starting Pokemon was and kind of other things. Uh, and it would kind of give you... Get, it, it would make make it feel more like a world rather than, like, a linear progression or whatever. Well, it would make the game and more replayable, kinda, too. Yeah, and it would also kind of give you, like, a, a neat thing that's, like, something that you that's yours that most other people don't have. It's like, oh, yeah, I came from this town. And yeah. like I had these experiences, and these are like different than what most what experiences most other players have than yeah. from different towns. And like if you see another player that's from the same town, you're like, oh hey, same town. Yeah, it makes it feel more like a like a world that people live in, I guess. Yeah. I think even just letting you do the gyms out of order, or like having more gyms than you need to go to. Like say there's twelve gyms, but you still only need eight badges. Like. The eight badges that you get and the order you get them in kind of makes you feel at least somewhat distinct from the other players, or at least it would. I yeah, imagine uh -huh. if they went that route. I mean, giving the player that amount of option in a Pokemon game, that would be a huge endeavor, but it would be a really cool experience. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, I don't... I, I guess, I you know, obviously I'm not a game developer. I don't <laughs> like know the first thing about... Sprite. Sorry to interrupt you. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I don't know the first thing about game balance, but, like, I can't imagine, you know, obviously you would have to go through the work of coming up with, like, a loadout. Because I always imagine the way it would work is, you know, every time you get a badge, all of the trainers level up. Uh-huh. Um, so no matter where you go, you're always fighting trainers that are, have a consistent level to yours. So I guess you would have to come up with, like, a, like eight or nine different loadouts for every trainer, but... Yeah. I mean... You know, Let's... you wouldn't be making, like, new art assets or animations or anything. It's just, yeah. like, telling the game what Pokemon they have and what moves they have. Yeah. That's... Yeah, I mean, coming up with, like, a move layout, layout or, like, a team for a, uh... 
I don't know. It's like if you do the last step where it's like what they're gonna be at the last level, I feel like it's much easier to work backwards from that to kind of like cut things here and there. It, I feel like it'd be much much easier than like making new assets for mm -hmm. things. You, you guys mentioned two things that I've always liked about. Uh... Well, it's an MMO, but World of Warcraft. The I one knew is you were going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I, I like I like the experience of that game. Like, I mean, I thought similar... about World of Warcraft too when I was talking about it, like choosing the yeah. alliance or the horde or whatever. Yeah, and, and even within the alliance and horde, like each race starts in a different starting area. So, like each mm -hmm. race and character you make is a different experience that you have in the game, mm -hmm. and it really. It really makes you attached to that character and to that zone. Like you feel like you're part of the world. Um, the other thing was a couple of years ago they did implement the progressive like leveling system. Like enemies level with you to a certain point, and then when you go to like the new expansion, they they start at a certain level and then go up from there. And like you said, it was a huge implementation, but it would be fun to see it in like a tighter RPG setting, like Pokemon. Yeah. Man, these old training animations are just one of the most nostalgic <laughs> things to me. Because I only ever did this when I, when I was a kid. Yeah. But yeah, it's really hard yeah. to do it now. Oh yeah, here's If only, if only the Pokemon we're getting was... Well, I guess I guess yeah. we've dogged on far-fetched enough. <laughs> I'm sure there's some use for him. I guess yeah. his design is kind of morbidly funny. He's yeah, a duck that's he like presenting a free item. Yeah, he comes with a yeah, he comes with a leak you're meant to cook him with. <laughs> he to me, he's like an HM bot. Like mm -hmm. he he can learn cut and fly in this. Which I think I don't think all the flyers in this game can learn cut, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I guess I actually I think Farfetch is the only one. Yeah, because I don't think Dodrio or Dodrio can. Yeah. Ooh, what about the, the the legendaries? I don't know if they can or can't. I don't think they can. God, cap going to the trouble of capturing a legendary just to use him as an H HM <laughs> mm -hmm. guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, in in Gen One, it's it's feasible to put fly on them, just because it gives you that turn of protection, and it's actually pretty strong a pretty strong flying attack. Yeah. I don't know. For Wait, seventy it... power, two turns is kind of a lot to ask, though. Yeah. Although, if you can't get hit in one of those turns... That's true, but it's so not like, even 100% accurate, so if you end up missing, true. you're down two turns. So, we are encountering Diglett's Cave, and I'm using Repels because Gen 1's cave encounter rate is cranked to the max in Diglett's Cave. Yeah. Like, even more so than Rock Tunnel. Like, you, there are Diglett's just... They want to attack you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're coming out of the damn walls! Yeah. The and, floor and is even, literally Diglett's. Yeah. Can you, you imagine like how much scarier aliens would have been if instead of aliens it was just Doug Trios and Diglett's? Oh god. A Diglett singing, pops out of someone's chest. Singing the song from the anime. Oh god! <laughs> oh, poor John Hurt. <laughs> he never catches a break. Oh. Uh, so we're about to go get uh, one of our star members of Team Red. Why is it star named you? Ducks? <laughs> I know. Isn't there some where he's got like an even sillier name? <laughs> like I know he has a different name in uh, Fire. I just can't remember it. Mm -hmm. I'll have to. My game boy is too far away for me to grab. Next time. Next time. Duck yeah, face. Oh yeah. But I think that's why I caught all those Pokemon in this part because I didn't quite have ten. Mm -hmm. I think that's why I caught the Ekans and the the Drowsy. Yeah, this was a mechanic I actually kind of liked um, in Gen 1 that never really re... I guess it kind of came back in Sun and Moon, because people would be like, Hey, get me this specific Pokemon and I'll get you an item. Or... Yeah. Actually, I think in the early game there is straight up a science issue. like, show me ten different species and I'll give you an item. But it's never like a critical progression item. Aren't there uh, trainers in a lot of the towns and Pokemon centers that do that too? Yeah, they'll have like specific little missions for you to go on, which, yeah, I mean, it's not much, you know, in the grand scope of games, but for Pokemon, it's a little more like side questy than your, what you normally tend to get. 
Yeah. Because most, like, NPC interactions in Pokemon games where you actually gain something are basically just, like, talk to the person, get item, interaction over. <laughs> yeah. It get There's more... There's more involved. It's yeah. a game. They're gamifying the mission. Yeah. And on that note, I, I do appreciate, you know, where I'm, I'm, a, I'm a part late on acknowledging this, but I appreciate how you get the bike in this game. <gasps> oh, dear. Take good care of Mr. Mime. Yeah, every, everybody was chubby in Gen 1. Good lord. Yeah. They really wanted to use the most out of uh, their, the sprite, available sprite area. Mm-hmm. But anyway, as far as, like, the bike is concerned, you know... Marcel! <laughs> no, this totally isn't just a dude in makeup. Yeah. <laughs> Shoved him in this Pokeball. <laughs> I totally didn't just put my friend Marcel in a costume and a <laughs> shove him in a Pokeball so I could get a Abra. What, what are his motives? No one knows because he's silent. Yeah. Man, so I don't. I, I I know everybody like made a funny. Excuse me. Everybody made fun of how scary he was in like the everybody reveal trailer. Made it funny. But okay. Uh, ha ha. <laughs> but Mr. Mime was one of the best parts of Detective Pikachu. Oh yeah. Full stop. The, the Marce- end of that scene sold it for me. Uh huh. Marcel looks like he's having trouble seeing the diglet. <laughs> <laughs> like way off in the distance. Like oh all his no! Hand up to shield his eyes from the sun. <laughs> Inside this underground tunnel. It's like, wait, yeah. does that thing have a face? <laughs> wait, I didn't sign up to like fight the little thumb people. It's just, it's just a rock, Marcel. Oh, as he sucks so, his thumb. Yeah. Yeah, his hand is kind of like malformed looking, isn't it? I wonder yeah. if he's got like one of his fingers down he's like trying to do like gang symbols or something. Like it's pro- it's, it's probably because I grew up with Pokemon, but like I, I I don't know. I don't really bat an eye at Mr. Mime. It's just kind of, you know, it's just another just another classic Pokemon. He's one of them creepy gremlin Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's uh, a so- human type Pokemon. Yeah. So when, if it was hemorrhaging, so it was like actually says like human looking or human type Pokemon or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Wasn't that their or like isn't uh, that their breeding type? I think so. Their yeah, uh, yeah, type, there is please, yeah, there is no. a breeding class of Pokemon called human shape. I think human shape. That was it. You know what though? Something like Mr. Mime doesn't disturb me nearly as much as like the ones that wear clothes, like throw and sock from uh, Gen Five. <laughs> maybe it's good that they do wear clothes maybe they have like really creepy looking muscles under there yeah now my, Mr. Mime isn't as creepy because he doesn't wear clothes <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining just... Mr. Mime in like office attire <laughs> <laughs> like like little glasses so here's okay, the Bill, how's the wife Oh, but he had the sign puzzle. language the entire thing. Well, yeah, so they fixed this puzzle in Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. It's always the same trash can. Um, this like the same two, and you just kind of have to trial and error it. In you this have to version, dig through Lieutenant Surge's garbage to find a key yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's a set of two locks to unlock the door to get to him. You have to and get it's... locks to open the door. Yeah, aren't they like they're like buttons hidden in the trash cans? <laughs> I forget how it works. Is this was because I remember like once you find the first one, the next one is in, like in one of the adjacent cans. Yeah. Is that was that something they added in Fire Red or was that um, in the original games? I I think it's in this one too. But it's always random which of the adjacent cans it's going to be. Yeah. So there's, like, unlimited combinations of which two cans you're going to have to talk to. Yeah. And it can get a little frustrating if you, like, yeah. find the first can, like, three times in a row. Yeah, this was, go... like... Honestly, this is the... I'd say this is the first gym that can be considered to have a puzzle, quote-unquote. 
Yeah. That's not just like get around the trainers. Yeah. I think that I need that experience, but I also don't want to do this puzzle. Mm-hmm. Hey, the fire gym has a a pokey quiz. Yeah. Oh yeah. With a, with, a with, with BS the, question. With the classic move, Tombstoner. <laughs> uh Gun. Nob, you brilliant man. Yes. <laughs> no, sh- shout outs to uh Nob Ogasawara. The uh the, the original translator for generations one through four. I think Platinum was yeah. his last game. And honestly, I Kind of shows, in my opinion. Yeah. The, the, who, what, you showed me that inter, that two part uh. interview. Oh, by Marcel. Uh, who who was it that did that interview with him? Because that was a really good in depth interview about the Pokemon oh. games. Oh. I feel like it was one of like the Pokemon like wiki like sites, like maybe Cerebi or something. Yeah. I mean, I you, you hardly ever get. Uh, discussions like that out of Japanese uh, companies. So to kind of get like the person who's kind of in between us and them to tell us all about the development process and the translation, it was breath of fresh air. And, like, oh yeah, because I, I just I just eat that stuff up. I'd love to I'd love to know like all the ins and outs. Like you know you get a Blu-ray of like a you know, like one of your classic movies. Like I got the alien set that has like 70 plus hours of bonus features or whatever and you like learn all the ins and outs of the production oh, of the yeah. movie but like I, mean, I would okay I don't know how f- if I go that far but like <laughs> to hear what goes on behind the closed doors at Nintendo like oh my god it's just so interesting to me Yeah, and it was so great to get that small window into just that one aspect of Pokemon like he was talking about um when they introduced double battles, he had to change the uh, the translated text for like trainer wants to battle, because like it was like now plural. Yeah. And apparently, like he wasn't fully satisfied with what he did in Gen three. So when Gen four came around, he came up with a superior solution at like the last minute, and put it in the game without Game Freak's approval. Like, oh. like a way to have the statement be grammatically correct, whether it was like singular or plural. Yeah, he changed it to you are challenged by trainer X or whatever. So that it doesn't matter. And then like a week before the game went gold, Game Freak was like, dude, we need to we need to talk about this. Because <laughs> apparently they are very like overprotective of like people making changes um, in localization. Yeah. I don't remember that part of the interview. Did they make him change it back, or did they did they keep it? No, they. Uh, I think they persuaded him, and I probably like butchered that story completely. Like it probably wasn't that extreme, but yeah. What's that? Game Freak is averse to change. No. <laughs> Man, talking about talking about uh, Nob's translation and interview reminded me that I need to sh- pro- probably put in the description the link to the playlist that Kotaku has called Found in Translation. Uh, one of their writers, Tim Rogers, did a really good, like, five to ten part uh, translation uh, of uh, Final Fantasy VII. And if you like the interview with Nob, that's also a good a good uh, insight into, like, the minds of developers mm-hmm. uh, across, across the Pacific. Yeah. I hope someday, like, I mean, you know, I don't want Nintendo, obviously, to go away, but, like, maybe, maybe in, like, 50 or so years, when a lot of this is kind of old news, like, they'll open up a little bit more about the development, and we'll get, like, some good documentary-style content, or or books or stuff that's a little more in-depth about, like, the development of some of these games. I want the, my favorite Pokemon book, uh, Professor Oak's Biography. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the Professor Oak Bible that they use for like the anime. Oh man, maybe he was actually like a strength on a truck to get Mew. <laughs> he was the one that put Mew there in the first place. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're doing in this part, Trey. Right? Oh, oh, yeah. I psyched you out. It's a cliffhanger. We're not gonna fight, uh, Lieutenant Surgeon. Until next time, Dang, Bobby. Not until Friday. Ugh. But I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait.
want to turn it on soon. Should be over. <laughs> right, join us then. Best way to end a part. See you later.